Okay, so I've got this DeWalt 5 amp hour battery right here that I got from a yard sale for next to nothing. What happens is you put it on the charger, the charger says it's full, but then when you go and hit the fuel gauge, you only get one bar. So that's not gonna work. We're gonna replace the cells in this battery, but I'm gonna take this thing apart and show you what to look for and why I'm replacing the cells. All right, so without further ado, Let's dive right in. All right, so let's get this thing out of its case and I'll show you what's going on. Now there's four screws here. They are a T10 security bit. All the screws are the same length, so don't worry about mixing them up. Once you get the screws out, just gently wiggle the top and it should come right off. Now we have some corrosion on the pins right here, so we're gonna be able to clean that off here. We gotta get this out of the case. Now it's a good idea if you're going to pry this out, which you're going to have to because DeWalt batteries are really tight, to make sure when you're poking around in there not to put your screwdriver where it's actually going to put a hole in a battery. Very carefully get it started. All right, just be very careful not to puncture the battery. All right, so let me show you what's going on with this thing. There's a bad cell imbalance, okay? The, the charger thinks it's full. Let me show you what's going on. First bank, 3.36. Second bank, 4.1. So that's why the charger's cutting off. I think the charger charges to 4.1. So as soon as it senses that, it shuts off. But then we go again. 3.29, 3.65, they're all over the place. 3.52, that is not going to work at all. Now, I've taken these things, not on this set, but another set that had the same problem, and I've taken a resistor like this, and I've drained down the ones that are high so that they all match, right? It takes forever. But then I've recharged it and discharged it a few times and I found that the imbalance was coming back. So I think what's going on is some of the cells are just bad and that's why they're behind the other cells. You can even look here on this first one right here that was 3.36 and look at this. There's some bubbles under the insulation right there where some rust has been forming under there. So we're going to take these cells out and replace them. So let's go ahead and unsolder what we can unsolder. Our first one is our main positive lead right here. And just undo all your balance leads right here. And you'll want to hold these up while the solder dries. That way you don't re-stick back again. And then finally, let's undo our negative. So before we take this thing apart any further, especially if you're new to this and you're not used to working on these things, it's a good idea to mark your two halves. I've put arrows here so they're pointing towards each other because you can get this bottom piece in upside down and it'll look like it's fitting. And then when you go to put it back in the case, it's going to be too tall because it's not fitting, even though you thought it was fitting. So mark this if you're not used to how this goes and save yourself a lot of trouble because if you get it wrong, you'll have to take everything back apart again to fix it. So you don't want to do that. All right, so I'm not going to cover this in great detail because this isn't something you'd normally have to do. But since I had all this corrosion on here, once you get all this stuff unsoldered, this board just pops right out of here. So I just took a Dremel tool and kind of cleaned up all my pins. And then I soaked them in Deox. And I took a piece of cardboard and kind of just went between all of them to clean the pins off. You just have to be careful of the temperature probe that's underneath the, uh, the board right here. Make sure that doesn't get bent and make sure it winds up in its little uh, glue blob that's underneath here that you can't see right now. All right, so the easiest way I've found to get these batteries out is just to go ahead and cut the strips right here through the middle. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna use a Dremel with a thin wheel on there the thinner, the better. Okay. 
Just when you're doing this, make sure not to cut into the battery itself. And we'll go ahead and do the other side. And we're going to go ahead and cut between these two. And you can go ahead and open this up and then carefully kind of pull, pull this apart right here to get one started. Careful, you might have a sharp edge right here. Right there. And just work on down the chain just like this. <laughs> and there we go. All right, so let's go ahead and get this thing back together. Now, here's what was originally in the uh, pack. It's an LG, and it's kind of hard to decipher these numbers here, but this should be a 2,500 milliamp hour battery because it's a 5 amp hour battery. Remember, we're series parallel, so 2.5 amp hours times 2 is 5 amp hours. Now, I could put a Samsung cell back in this, but I'm going to use these Eve cells right here. I've used these before and they seem to work pretty good, but you'll want to go through and make sure that they're all pretty well balanced. I got these from 18650batterystore.com. I'm not affiliated with them whatsoever. So let's go ahead and check them out. 358, looking good. And they're all very, very close, approximately 358, 3.58. If I didn't mention it, these are 18650 batteries. That's the size, 18 millimeters by 65 millimeters. I'm sure you already knew that, but I just had to mention it anyway. All right, so the way these things go in the pack, it's very easy. You don't even ha hardly have to remember. We've got our positive wire over here, so obviously the positive side of the battery is going to be on this side. And that's the one with the white circle right here. That's the positive side, just like so. So you, the two positives go here, goes through, snakes around this way, and they're just, it just zigzags back and forth. And then you wind up with a negative here. You'll see how that works here in a minute. Remember, let's go ahead and get our pieces together the right way so that we don't get them upside down. Starting with our positives over here. And we just alternate every time. Very simple. And our negatives are going to be the end. So just like that. So I measured the factory DeWall strips and they come out to about 0.3 millimeters. Now that's a pretty beefy strip and it's going to take a pretty beefy welder to be able to weld that. I don't have a welder that can handle that. I'm using this CC capacitative discharge welder right here. This works pretty good, but I found that 0.2 pure nickel is about the most it wants to do. And if you have to weld another nickel on top of a nickel, which is the way you have to do it when you're building these packs, you'll see why here in a minute, it doesn't stick very good. So I'm going to use 0.15. That's about the most I've found that it'll use. If you're going to use one of those battery-powered welders, 0.1 nickel-plated steel is about the most they'll do. I've built these packs before like that, but what you have to do is double up the strips, put one strip on top of another strip, and that actually will work if all you've got is one of those small welders. Now, there's a nickel strip calculator online if you Google nickel strip calculator. And what I've got here is a 5S2P battery pack, 5 series, 2 parallel. And I'm using 0.15 millimeter by 8 millimeters wide strips. Now, it says here at an average current of 40 amps and a peak current of 90 amps, our temperature rise is fairly acceptable. It's 218 Kelvin which is not that bad. All right, so to keep these batteries as tight as possible, I've gone ahead and put a wire tie, kind of a band around the whole thing right here. 
That'll make sure that everything is as flat as it can be. Now what I've done is, is I've measured and cut 16 nickel strips that are just under an inch and an eighth long. They're maybe around an inch and a sixteenth, seem to be about the sweet spot for these. I've made 16 of them. Four of them have dog ears on both sides, like that, and I'll show you why here in a second. And eight of them, I've made a dog ear just on one side, like this one right here. All right, and then the rest of them are untouched. Now the reason I cut the dog ears is, is because the way these batteries are made, you've got your positive right here on top of this button, and then right here is if you damage the jacket or anything like that while you're taking this apart, your negative is right here. So it's very easy to short these things out. And if you don't have the dog ears on, now this is just me, like this one doesn't have any dog ears, it could slip underneath that jacket right there if you're not watching what you're doing and contact the negative side. All right, so we have our positive wire right here. So this one is gonna be different, so we're not gonna fool with this one. But the rest of these are gonna get a parallel strip down each one, so let's go ahead and put those on. And again, these are .15 pure nickel strips. Now I actually have to run this welder all the way up on high because it takes a lot of power to weld these pure nickel strips. I'll give it a hard press and then I'll let off just a little bit. So like that. And make sure that you set a delay on the welder that's acceptable. I've got mine set to about three and a half seconds. If you've got a foot pedal, that's even better. So let's do another one here. All right. Now when you've got this thing on its side, you wanna make sure you're working on a non-conductive surface. If you're working on a piece of sheet metal, this whole thing is gonna short out and you're gonna have a disaster on your hands. So you don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and weld on these other three right here. We're gonna leave this one alone for now. This one's gonna be different. All right, so remember, so here's our negative right here. That's gonna come through to our positive. It's going to jump here, then it's going to go down and back. It snakes around every time. So this first group gets attached, skip here. The second group gets attached, and then the positive is on its own too. I, did, I already did this side here. This is our negative, so that's going through to the other side. Those two are connected. We skip because they're connected on the other side, and then the last two are connected. So the other side is a little bit different. So I'm going to do the bottom ones first, and I'll show you why I'm not going to do the top ones just yet. Notice I put the dog-eared corner right there on the positive side. All right, so remember we still got our little balance leads right here to connect. So what I want to do is solder a little tab. I took a strip and I cut it in half right here. I cut it in half and I'm going to solder that right in the right smack in the middle of the tab. That way we'll have something to um, solder to. See what I did right here? Just like that. And I'm going to solder that on there. You could spot weld this part on, but it's just as easy to solder that on. But I want to solder that on before we tack weld that on there so that we don't have any chance of uh, barbecuing our insulation right here. So just go ahead and tin that right smack in the middle. And we'll go ahead and tin our piece right here. Now I've got these two clamped together. Doesn't matter that this tab is too long. I'm going to cut it off. So just take a Dremel tool and kind of flatten that solder down. But these packs are tight anyway. And we don't want this to be too wide. Just bend your tab over. And that looks pretty good right about there. All right, so I've gone ahead and spot welded my other two tabs right here and my balance leads up here as well. And I also soldered them back to the original 
uh, little wires that were on there also. So that's all done too. So let's just hook up our positive and negative leads and then we should be just about done with this puppy. Now I've gone ahead and already made a piece for it. I've already measured it and I've already cut the dog ears on the positive end down here on the bottom. Let's put our negative one on. Now notice that it's folded over so that it can go that way. Because remember, our negative lead is short. It's way up here. So we got to fold that like that to accommodate that. And that's the name of that tune. Hopefully our status indicator is going to light up. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think we're back in business. Now, what I'd like to do is go ahead and I'm going to put this thing in the charger just like it sits without the case first. Because we had such a bad imbalance in the beginning, I want to charge this thing up and make sure that we don't get that again after it's charged. All right, so we're done charging. Let's go ahead and check our voltages. 4.10, 1, 1, 4.10, 4.11, and 4.11. So we're all within 0 0.01. That's close enough for me. We got our three indicator lights here, indicating a full charge, so that makes me very happy. Now remember I said earlier that there was a little hack that you could use to make these things fit a little bit better? This is up to you whether you want to do this or not. I'm doing it on mine because it's just a lot easier to get the batteries in there. So I took the, uh, the case and I took a Dremel tool and kind of eat out these little ribs on the side right here a little bit. So you can see what they look like when they're new, but I took a Dremel tool and kind of wore them down and that will help a lot to get that in there. You might not like to do that. If you don't, then go ahead and struggle with it. Now the way this goes, you got this area right here where this little board goes, the board right here, so keep that in mind. Don't put it in backwards. It's a good idea to put the back down in there first and then push the front down. And see, it's still tight. This board goes right in here and the spring goes just like so. And of course, this comes on top just like that. All right, got it all back together. Now, by the way, I didn't show it, but I put that little wafer back on there that's in the corner right there on top of the negative wire. I just used some two-sided tape to reattach that. So our total pack voltage should be about 20.5. And we are, we're very close. 20.4, so very good. And of course, we got our three bars here. Let's go ahead and try it out in a tool. That's the ultimate test. Working perfect. All right, guys. So that's how you rebuild one of those. I hope this video has been helpful for you. Thanks for watching.